Partitioning with time zones. Here's the question that came in. I'm trying to interval partition a table with a timestamp with time zone column and the database is returning an error. Why can't I partition this column? And the too long didn't read answer to this is it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to do so. Now that's a bit of a flippant sort of dismissal of this question and I don't mean to offend. Let's explore why. The first one is determinism. Time zones aren't these things that are fixed in stone. For example, if I had a query where I literally had a time zone column, a timestamp with time zone column, and I was looking for all the data that pertain to 1.30 a.m. in the morning. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but in, Mo in Australia, when we change time zones for summertime, et cetera, it's normally between one and two in the morning. So as I insert rows and they go in and then the clocks wind backwards, what do I do in terms of the partitioning scheme? Where does data go? One of the key elements of database performance when it comes to partition tables is partition pruning, being able to isolate partitions of interest when you come to running queries. If the partitioning key column was a time zone, well, yeah, it, be it becomes a bit indeterminate as to where the data would sit in the right partitions as time goes backwards as we transit from summertime to wintertime and vice versa. So the first one is the issue of determinism. But one would imagine if you put enough work into the text that you could possibly overcome that. The second one is this, is that time zones change over time. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. In Australia, in fact, in my state, we don't have daylight saving or summertime when summer comes along. And there were all sorts of reasons for this. I mean, there's a lot of FUD, you know, fear and uncertainty about people would say, oh, the curtains would fade more if we uh, move the clocks forward or the cows would get confused and they wouldn't be able to go to the right time for milking. All these ridiculous arguments about why we shouldn't shift time zones in the summertime. I, for one, as you can probably tell, I'm biased. I would love to have summertime. Uh, I lived in Europe for a number of years and I used to love those late evenings where the sun was still up, but we don't get it here in Perth. However, we did used to have it. Many years ago, we did have summertime and at some point the government decided not to have it. So the definition of time zones around the world changes over time. And the Oracle database needs to take that into account. And in particular, if you select from your V$ time zone file, you'll see what version your time zones are at. And on this database here, this is my local database, it's time zone number 32. That's not good because that means I've been lazy. The actual current time zone, I think time zone file is number 36 you can get. I wanna stress, just as a segue away from partitioning here, Managing the time zones is your responsibility. It doesn't come as part and parcel with patching. In fact, this database here is running 19.11. It's about as up to date as you can get. I haven't yet downloaded and applied the just released July CPU patch. But 19.11, I've kept this database patched up to date as I should do as regularly as patches come out. You'll notice that the time zone was not updated with it. That is a separate responsibility you have as a DBA to keep your time zones up to date. But because you can see V$ time zone file, it tells you that time zone definitions change over time. What would you do with existing data if what used to be a time zone range is no longer a time zone range or a shift in time? That's another step in that indeterminateness or indeterminism about where data would be stored. They're the reasons we block it. Let's approach some of the considerations you might want to look at when it comes to actually using time zones and in conjunction with partitioned tables. There's a few things we can try, a few workarounds we can explore. So we're gonna have a few attempts here at working our way through the problems that our uh, questioner or our poster provided. So I've tried to create a table here called partition table, and I'm gonna have a crack at partitioning on the my TZ column, which is a timestamp with time zone. And as the original poster pre presented, yeah, we're stuck. It says it's an unimplemented feature. And it literally is, you simply cannot do it in any way, shape or form. What if I try a timestamp with a local time zone? And, and that you might think is perhaps a, a safer option because we're only using the time zone of the database as opposed to catering for any time zone information that would come in via an insert statement, etc. We still get the same problem. It says you're using an invalid data type. You can see we seem to be a bit closer. We've gone from unimplemented feature to invalid data type for partitioning, but we're still not allowed to do it. Interestingly, what if I do away with the interval? What if I say, well, let's actually explicitly define the ranges now. And hopefully, because at the moment I create this table, 
my time zone file is fixed. Therefore, maybe this is good enough to actually get this. So local time zone with explicit ranges. I get closer, but I'm still not allowed to do it. It says the data types aren't correct. And there's a subtle difference here between timestamp with local time zone and just a timestamp. If we look at the partition definitions there, the P1, P2, etc., I've just used a timestamp. I haven't actually provided time zone information, even though I'm assuming I'm using the local time zone of the database. So let's have one last attempt. And you can see this is what this is about as close as we can get. If I have a local time zone and I define them with the timestamp definition of the fully timestamp with time zone information. I've used plus eight because that's per uh, my time here. So you can actually get close to having some sort of time zone information, but the key thing is it has to be the local time zone and you're not gonna be able to do it with interval time zones. I think because the partitions will be created dynamically. Um, it's just a restriction on the Oracle database. Having managed to seemingly, seemingly overcome this issue of having some time zone information with partitions, let's explore whether we actually get any genuine benefit out of this. So I'll insert some rows of what about 150,000 rows in there, gather some stats. And you can see I've actually got my partitions here and I've got some rows. I've managed to spread the data nicely over all the rows. Now I do a query where I say where my time zone greater than a starting and ending time zone. I seem to have partition elimination. And, and this is one of the things that I, I sort of, I hesitate about using time zones in partition columns, even local time zones. It says I'm doing a partition range iterator, which is better than partition range all, which means the entire table. But one of the things I do see is I see these keys. Normally I would see explicit partition numbers. And that's one of the overheads because what we have to do inside the database is apply a number of sort of different functions, internal functions, to get all this data sorted out such that it's no longer time zone dependent. Be aware of the fact that if you do partition, even with local time zones, you don't get as good information from the execution plan. We can actually see if it actually is doing partition elimination. If I do a uh, count here, you can see I've got 27,000 rows, which is the right amount of data. If I then go do a, was it select star from DBMS cursor, DBMS explain.display cursor, which shows me the details of the execution plan proper. The key thing you can see here is the starts column. If I did a, if I scanned multiple partitions, this table access full would have a greater than one start number because I would start for once for each partition. The fact that it says starts of one means I genuinely did get partition elimination or partition pruning. I only had to scan one partition. If I take that time zone column and then apply probably what I would say the more common predicates would be from users if they're doing ad hoc query, like for example, passing in a date, I get a similar kind of artifact. I am getting partition pruning, but I don't get to see what particular partition it is. I still have this key column information there. It's a bit like sort of a bind variable. If I do the fully qualified or fully defined timestamp with time zone information in my predicates, for example, up here, then finally I have some data, data types sort of um, uh, parity, and I actually do see the values one through six instead of there. Now, that looks good, doesn't it? Looks like, yep, I'm now seeing the explicit partition numbers but I didn't change the value of this predicate. This is still just one month out of my six months worth of table. And yet the database did partition range all. This is one of those really strange anomalies. This data type is timestamp with time zone or local time zone. This is a timestamp with time zone and the database treats them as different. That's a problem. So this is one of the reasons why things can get quite quirky when you're using timestamps as partition ranges, I'm generally not a big fan because there are so many sort of fraught little outlying edge cases depending on what how the data is presented to the queries. If I run that gather plan statistics, you can see it actually did six starts. This is just to reinforce the other one where we saw starts of one. You can see when I did six starts, it means I actually scanned six partitions. So putting the whole timestamp thing aside for a second, if you ever want to see how many partitions you actually scanned, look at the starts column when you do a display cursor result. What if I do something like my timestamp with two timestamp TZ, as opposed to using that shorthand timestamp format I was using before, you get the same results. I'm doing partition range all, the same thing, all six partitions. There are risks involved when you start heading down this timestamp territory. You have to be very, very precise and very, very correct or you start getting some dramas. Rather than do that, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that kind of 
implementation. Rather than do that, if I was going to partition, I want to normalize my dates to something which is consistent worldwide, and that, of course, is UTC time or Greenwich Mean Time. If you do have a timestamp with time zone column like this one, what you can do is create a virtual column based on it, which simply gets the UTC value for it, just using sysastract UTC, and then you can partition on that virtual column. That in itself has some side effects because if I then repopulate this table and do some queries, now when I do UTC, the virtual column, which is defined as UTC, I do get partition elimination. However, it's worth noting that I need to be careful here because UTC and your time zone will obviously be different. You have to be careful of the incoming data to make sure that it is also in a UTC time zone. If I do UTC on a date, then I do get the nice partition elimination and I get told what those partitions are. However, if I go back to using my normal column, not the virtual one, which was not used as a partitioning key, the database at this stage is not smart enough to go, ah, oh, let's apply a transformation to the data, remap it to the UTC, which is the partitioning column and do partition elimination. It's not good enough to do that. It simply scans all the partitions. That's a downside. So perhaps here's a mantra you can adopt. This is what I adhere to when I'm looking at partitioning and it comes to time zones and using them in partitioned column keys. It is unlikely that time zones are the correct choice. And who knows, maybe that statement is where the term UTC comes from, which is the timestamp you do want to be using. UTC time zone is the way to go. Little pun, little play on words there, but hopefully you get the idea. If you can stick to UTC, much like our autonomous databases do across the board, you're probably going to have a lot less headaches. <laughs>